For the last decade, Tesla has had a firm grasp on the EV market, offering vehicles with giant screens, semi-autonomous driving, and a 300 plus mile range. Several companies have begun to fight back with EV offerings of their own. This includes legacy brands like Porsche, Mercedes-Benz, and Ford. Even brand new companies like Rivian and Lucid have joined the battle to give Tesla a run for their money. However, there is a surprise brand that recently announced they're beginning to develop electric cars. I'm not talking about Apple. The company I'm talking about is Sony. Yes, the same company that builds PlayStation 5s and TVs wants to make electric cars. Today, we're gonna to talk about how Sony is planning to separate themselves from the competition. What kind of infrastructure do they have in place for their plan to work? And most importantly, we're gonna see if they're in over their heads. This video is not for Xbox fans. If you modeled your entire personality after Daxter when you were 11 years old, this video is for you. Everyone knows Sony as the massive technology company that produces a wide range of consumer and professional electronics. While they've been involved in the car industry for years, offering sound systems and screens both in new cars as well as in the aftermarket, they are not one of the first brands you think of when you talk about cars. So it was understandable that everyone raised their eyebrows when Sony said they wanted to make an electric car. Could you imagine the reaction if JBL or Bang & Olufsen came out and said they wanted to make an EV? Probably not. However, Sony has taken a few steps in the right direction in hopes that the industry will take them more seriously. Back in 2020, Sony unveiled the Vision S01 concept at CES, or the Consumer Electronics Show. It was a small electric car with a similar profile to a Tesla Model 3. At the time, journalists and EV enthusiasts were doubtful about Sony legitimately making the leap manufacturing EVs for the consumer. Electrek, a news site with a focus on EVs, said, quote, we've seen our fair share of EV concepts over the years. Some of them seem serious and some of them didn't. This one may lean a bit towards the latter category. To be fair, Sony made it clear that the Vision S01 concept was merely a case study and they didn't plan on entering the automotive space. Electric's take was pretty spot on in 2020. At CES 2022, Sony was back and this time they unveiled the Vision S02 concept. It's a small crossover SUV that looks similar to the Tesla Model Y. And what was even more surprising is that it looked close to production ready. Sony emphasized safety as their top priority as they develop mobility technology. With over 40 sensors inside and out, the Vision S02 concept could monitor safety as well as achieve up to level two self-driving operation. Level two is a form of hands-off driving where the driver keeps their hands on the wheel but only really intervenes in the case of a system failure. While there are many cars on the road currently with level two driving capability, this is still quite a leap for a company like Sony, which has never built a car before. They're moving much faster than most people would expect. Sony believes in their products, and it seems others are excited to see what they're capable of. According to CEO Kenichiro Yoshida, quote, the excitement we received really encouraged us to further consider how we can bring creativity and technology to change the experience of moving from one place to another. With the CES announcement, Sony created a branch called Sony Mobility Incorporated, which will be fully established in the spring of this year. Sony Mobility was created with the hopes to continue developing and manufacturing electric cars that consumers can eventually buy and drive. This is Sony saying that they're more than just thinking about making cars, they're doing the work and researching whether it's actually possible. One of the bigger questions that needs answering is, how would Sony build a car in the first place? Manufacturing cars is a very expensive process. The cost of factories themselves is enormous. Back in 2015, Toyota spent a billion dollars to build a factory in Mexico for the Corolla sedan. In November of 2021, Tesla announced their Gigafactory in Austin, Texas, cost at least 1.06 billion. Even after you spend a billion on a factory, you need to hire staff to run it, which will cost even more. When you're the two biggest automakers in the world, that kind of spending is reasonable. But for a company like Sony, it can be hard to justify an investment like that. A more cost-effective solution for Sony is to outsource the manufacturing to another company. Enter Magna International. Magna International is a Canadian mobility technology company and is North America's leading parts supplier. With 154,000 employees, 347 manufacturing operations, and 90 product development, engineering, and sales centers in 28 countries, they might be one of the biggest companies most people don't know about. With a long history producing parts for companies like GM, Ford, BMW, Mercedes-Benz, Toyota, Tesla, and Tata Motors, their products can be found on most vehicles on the road today. To put it quite simply, Sony knew that Magna were veterans of the auto industry when they partnered with them to begin development on the Vision S 
back in 2018. More specifically, Sony worked with Magna Steyr, a contract manufacturer in Austria. Magna Steyr is already producing cars for Toyota and BMW, like the Supra and the Z4. During the development process, Magna and Sony learned a lot about each other, since engineers from two different industries were finally working together. Magna had to reevaluate how to explain things to non-automotive people. What are the relevant processes and how to make the best documentation? At the end of the process, they found a lot of common ground, since both see themselves as mobility technology companies committed to accelerating the future of transportation. This partnership could be key for Sony to be a legitimate player in the automotive industry because many other companies don't have as smooth of a process Sony is currently experiencing. Whenever the production of Sony's EV actually starts, Magna will most certainly build the cars while Sony develops the electronics, allowing both companies to play to their strengths. Sony knows they're the newcomer to the industry. They know what it's like to break into a space that they have no foothold in before, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Over the years, there have been many companies that have tried and failed to enter the EV market. Best known for its vacuums, Dyson had invested $2.7 billion into their EV project and had plans to build a factory in Singapore before terminating the venture. Fisker produced and sold the Fisker Karma, a luxury plug-in hybrid. Shortly after launch, however, two major battery recalls were issued for the car due to a fire risk. Eventually, they filed for bankruptcy in 2013. They're back, though under a different name. The top Chinese EV company, NIO, initially looked like it was gonna gain some traction, but began to take losses in 2019, causing them to shut down their San Francisco office and recall one of their vehicles. Apple, who have been developing their iCar for what feels like forever, met up with several automakers, including Hyundai, Nissan, and even Ferrari to help manufacture it. However, Apple wanted to challenge the current processes of how a car's made, like how the seats and the body were made. Unfortunately, the traditional manufacturers were not a fan of Apple's ideas, and the talks ended as a result. Last year, they turned towards LG and Magna for manufacturing support. Whether Apple finally makes any progress with its new partners won't be known until around 2024 or 2025. While Sony has made two concepts and has reported having $16 billion cash on hand, we can see that money is not the only factor necessary to successfully get an EV off the ground. Currently, Sony has a successful partnership with an industry titan like Magna International, and this might be the differentiating factor that separates them from other failed startups. Since they are only in the initial stages of the process, Sony knows they are underdogs in the EV space. However, Sony knows this is not the first time they have been in this position before. Back in the early 90s, the industry leaders in gaming consoles were Nintendo and Sega. Sony was keen on entering the market and approached Nintendo to help create a new console. As a CD-ROM add-on to the Super Nintendo, it was going to be called the Nintendo PlayStation. However, even after over 200 prototypes were built, the system was never released and Nintendo backed out of the partnership. However, Nintendo didn't just back out of the deal with Sony, but negotiated a side deal with Sony's lead competitor, Philips. Obviously upset by the betrayal, Sony took the technology they developed for a CD-based video game console and announced that they were developing the PlayStation at the 1991 CES. Then, in CES 1995, Olaf Olafsson of Sony Electronic Publishing explained the features of the new PlayStation and ended the speech saying that it would cost $299. This undercut the Sega Saturn's price by $100 and caught Sega with their pants down. After the PlayStation was released in the United States in 1995, it sold more consoles in two days than the Saturn did in the previous five months. The Saturn was shunned and several stores pulled the console from their shelves due to the fact it was more difficult to sell the more expensive console. This was a devastating loss to Sega since they invested heavily into the Saturn's success. Even Nintendo, who released the Nintendo 64, was overshadowed when Sony introduced the Final Fantasy franchise to PlayStation, which further drove PlayStation sales. This weakened Nintendo's market share and pushed Sega even further out of the market. It wasn't too long before the console wars between Nintendo and Sega ended when they both realized they were facing a new rival in Sony. And as of 2021, Sony is the biggest console manufacturer in the world.
Doubters can say whatever they want, but the reality is, is Sony not only has experience being an underdog in a brand new industry, but knows what it takes to come out on top. Granted, cars are a little more complicated than consoles. Presently, they've already built two concept cars and have a manufacturing infrastructure in place. While it is not impossible for Sony to have the same fate as a company like Nikola or the companies we mentioned earlier, they have taken the proper steps to have a chance at success. With $16 billion of cash on hand and what looks like a strong partnership with Magna International, they have the potential to take over the EV space the same way they took over the gaming industry so many years ago. Only time will tell how far they can go. Hey you, you want to get buffed this year? Well listen up, Pasta Arms. Donut just released the ultimate gym attire. And I'm here to show you how to get it workout ready. So pay attention. Step one. Buy this beautifully designed shirt for just $29.98. That's way less than $30. Step two. Get some scissors out of the drawer, the one that we all have in our kitchen. Step three. Carefully cut off the sleeves like so. You'll notice with each snip that this shirt is made from high quality cotton. Now doing this will help airflow as well as highlight your soon to be sculpted arms. So go to DonutMedia.com and get all sweaty in this new Buff Horses shirt today. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Wheelhouse. If you want to learn more about the Dyson car and the Apple car and other tech company cars, we actually did a video on that back in 2020. I'll put a link uh, down in the description. For the record, I am biased. I am a, a PlayStation guy. Big shout out to Ratchet and Clank, Jack and Daxter, and Sly Cooper and the gang. Best games ever, dude. Sony should make a Ratchet and Clank themed EV. I feel like that would work really well. If they make like an off-roader, maybe they can style it after some of the cars from Jack X Combat Racing. Uh, oh my God, Crash Team Racing. Sony, just make some RC carts with all the Crash characters. I would buy that. All right, I'm gonna go play. I'm gonna go play Sly Cooper now. See ya.